The Liberal Party is gathering in Canberra for its annual federal council, the last before the next election. Let's go live to senior political reporter Jonathan Lee. No. Jonathan, it's clear this is all about setting the agenda for re-election. Sam, good morning to you. Yes, it certainly is. With the Liberal Party unable to have its federal council last year because of COVID and restrictions, this year it is all about the all-important re-election for the party. So really no controversial motions, movements, ensuring everyone's on the same page and heaping praise on the leadership of Scott Morrison for what the party's gone through this COVID, I suppose, this pandemic. Gladys Berejiklian and Stephen Marshall, both Liberal premiers, have been up in the last hour and they've certainly heaped that praise on the Prime Minister. Let's have a listen. Just over a year ago, none of us knew what to expect, expect in Australia in relation to the pandemic. We knew there was uh, horrible situations in every part of the world. And yet, what would Australia's fate be? And from the very first moment, our Prime Minister had the courage to argue with us. And at that stage, we were all fearful of the health consequences. But at that stage, the Prime Minister, before anybody else uttered those words, said this is as much about our economy and jobs and the future and livelihoods as it is about saving lives. And it is that mantra which has allowed New South Wales to weather this difficult past couple of years, in particular during the pandemic. 750,000 people are becoming infected with the coronavirus every single day. 13,000 people are losing their lives to the coronavirus every single day. But the leadership that we have here from the Prime Minister, from our excellent Federal Health Minister, Greg Hunt, uh, to the National uh, Cabinet, chaired expertly, expertly uh, by uh, the steady hand of our Prime Minister on that tiller has put us in an enviable position globally. So, Sam, let's have a quick look with this graphic at what has been, uh, what have been some of the motions really here, what's been passed. And it's worth also explaining to the viewers that just because something is passed here as a motion doesn't necessarily mean it means it becomes legislation. It's certainly just what the grassroots believes. Uh, well, they looked at, uh, they certainly approved the abolition of student union fees. They've talked about that many times before. A strategic oil reserve ensuring there's 90 days oil supply here within the country should there be a conflict or a problem. Uh, the cancelling of the Belt and Road Agreement, of course, the federal government's already gone uh, a large way to doing that and improving and streamlining minor approving approval processes. There was, uh, there was an emotional moment uh, about an hour ago uh, where uh, a lady got up and talked about changes the federal government has made uh, when it comes to superannuation, ensuring those on uh, smaller salaries can accrue super. This is all about improving the financial situation and circumstances specifically of women. And you get a fair idea of just how important this was when you see the emotion. Have a listen. Like you, I know countless women who will be in poverty in their old age because of only having small part-time jobs. And down to my... Sorry, it's emotional. My 21-year-old niece, who's never had a job but pays more than $400, is so proud and cried. A friend of mine in her 40s with two young children of the same thing also cried when I was able to say, you will now receive superannuation. You too have a future. The forgotten women of our country salute our government for bringing this in. Yes, yeah, Sam, the Prime Minister should also be up in the next 20 minutes. I'm told he'll be making a specific announcement in regards to superannuation, specifically what will affect retirees. And there'll also be a particular talk and a pitch for financial security of women. Obviously, that's been a big issue in the past three months. It'll be a big issue uh, the next election. It's worth also remembering that Scott Morrison tomorrow will head to New Zealand. He'll meet with Jacinda Ardern. He should be back uh, around uh, early Monday. So the Prime Minister heading overseas to talk with uh, New Zealand's leader, New Zealand's Prime Minister. It's going to be a big few days in politics, Sam. It will be indeed. Jonathan Lee, appreciate the update. And as Jonathan mentioned, we will bring you the Prime Minister live when he makes that announcement later today.